As you watch this teaching, I would like to ask you to please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. My name is Rick Renner, and I'm in the ancient city of Miletus in the Roman province of Asia. Miletus was an amazing city. It said right on the harbor, ships came, ships went, people came, and they came here to shop. And behind me is one of the markets, which was called the Agora. This city actually had several markets, several Agoras, but this word Agora is very important when we think of the New Testament because from this word agora, we get the word redemption. The word agorizo is borrowed from the word agora. Again, agora is the word marketplace. Agorizo means to buy something in the market. Slaves were frequently sold in the market. That was the primary place where you went to sell a slave or to buy a slave. The word agorizo, translated redemption in the New Testament, describes the process of buying a slave out of the marketplace. And this is the word used to describe Jesus' redemption in our life, which means when Jesus came into the world, we were the slaves. We were in Satan's marketplace, being abused, being sold, being traded, lost in a life of sin. And Jesus saw us and said, I want that person. I want that slave, and I'm willing to pay the highest price required to purchase that person out of slavery and the price was Jesus' own blood. Jesus paid the highest price ever paid to redeem someone from slavery. The slave was you. The price was Jesus' blood. And Jesus gave his blood, agorizo, to buy you out of the agora, out of the marketplace where Satan was abusing you. The word redemption means Jesus paid the price to buy you out of Satan's slave market. That's what I think about every time. I come to this part of the world and I see an ancient agora, a marketplace. My mind immediately goes to the word agorizo and Christ's redemptive work in our life. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My friend, today we're going to return to the subject of redemption. In the stand up to today's program, I was standing in the ancient city of Miletus where there was a very big market where they bought and sold slaves. In fact, they bought and sold slaves all over the Roman world in Miletus and Ephesus and Antioch, Alexandria, Corinth in Rome, this was really something that all of Paul's readers understood because the buying and selling of slaves took place all the time. And from that world of slavery, Paul developed the word redemption. The word redemption. The Bible tells us in Psalm 107 verse two, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, who he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And we've seen in previous programs that before the grace of God and the blood of Jesus touched us, we were all members of Satan's slave market. But Jesus came into the slave market. He paid the price of his own blood to redeem us out of the hand of the enemy. And Psalm 107 verse 2 says, we ought to say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You should just say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. That means Jesus paid the price to set you free from Satan's dominion over your life. And we saw in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20 that now you've been bought with a price and we are obligated to glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are God's. Now Jesus is our Lord. He's our new owner. And he wants us to glorify him with our body and with our life. We've been redeemed, and now we have a new master whose name is Jesus. Amen. Hey, I'm speaking to you for my brand new series, which is called Resting in Our Redemption. Do you understand what it means to be redeemed? You know, I grew up in a church where we sang a wonderful song, Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed by his infinite mercy, his child and forever I am. And oh, I love to sing that song. I sang it with all my might and didn't have a clue what it really meant to be redeemed. 
being redeemed is so much bigger than I ever understood. We need to know what it means to be redeemed. Please order this. It will change your life and it comes with a study guide that's filled with all the Greek words, all the history, the points, all the principles in this teaching. And by reading and listening or seeing, you can really get this teaching deep inside you and it would be a great series to share with somebody else. We're also offering you right now my book, which is called Dressed to Kill. The full title is, you don't have to take it anymore because you are dressed to kill. And the reason we're offering this book right now with this series is because there's a whole chapter in this book called Resting in Our Redemption. And today I'm gonna to read you just a little bit from it, but we need to understand what is in our redemption, what Jesus did for us. So reach for your Bible, and today we're going to turn to the New Testament, and we're going to see the word redemption mm, as is used in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Now, in the previous program, we saw the Greek word agorizo, which means to purchase. Today, we're going to see the next Greek word ex agorizo, but listen to this. Today, we're going to see that Jesus purchased us out of slavery, and that's very important because a slave could be purchased and then later could be put on the auction block to be sold again. But when Jesus did his work of redemption in our life, we were never to be put on the auction block ever again. He permanently liberated us. He purchased us out of slavery forever. And that's what the Bible tells us. Listen to this in Galatians 3, verse 13. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. That word redeemed is the word ex agorizo. Now, yesterday we saw the word agorizo, but this is the word ex agorizo. It is a compound of the word ex and the word agorizo. The word ek means out, and the word agorizo means to purchase in the marketplace. It was used to denote the purchase of a slave out of the slave market to transfer ownership from a seller to a buyer. It can be translated to redeem, but when compounded together with the word ex, it forms the word ex agarazzo, which pictures one who has come into the market to purchase a slave out of the marketplace, never to be put on the auction block again. This is permanent removal this is permanent deliverance. It signifies the purchase of a slave to permanently set that slave free from that horrible place, never to be put on the trading block of slavery ever again. It pictures a slave that has been liberated out of that cursed slave market forever. That's the word ex agorizo, which here is translated redeemed. Now I want to read to you from several pages in Dress to Kill. This is amazing. I want you to really get this. Listen to this. The word ex is a preposition that means out. And as we've already discussed, the word agarazzo describes a slave market. When these are combined, they form the word ex agarazzo, which pictures one who has come to purchase a slave permanently out of the slave market. Ex agarazzo conveys the idea of removal. It signifies the purchase of a slave in order to permanently set that slave free from that place, never to be put on the auction block again. The word ex agarazzo pictures a slave who has been liberated from that stinking, nauseating, disgusting, depraved, cursed market for ever and ever and ever, never to be put there again. This word ex agarazzo is used in Paul's epistles multiple times to picture Jesus' redemptive work to remove us from spiritual slavery. And an example is Galatians 3.13 where the Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That word redeemed, the Greek word ex agarazzo. And by using the word ex agarazzo in connection with Jesus redeeming us from the curse of the law, Paul tells us that Jesus' sacrificial death not only paid the penalty for our sin, but his death removed us permanently from living under the curse of the law from henceforth and forevermore. That is amazing. This is what we must understand about God's plan of redemption. His purpose 
in sending his son was not just to inspect our condition of slavery and to locate us in our mess. His ultimate plan, which he accomplished in Jesus' death and resurrection, was to buy us out of that miserable condition to make us his own sons and daughters forever removed from living under the curse of the law and of sin. But slaves did not come cheaply if the auctioneer knew that if I really wanted a particular slave, he could demand unbelievably high prices. So we have to ask, what price did Jesus pay for our redemption from Satan's power over our lives? What price was required to purchase us and to permanently set us free? Well, that's a very important question. But now we know the price was not cheap. Jesus paid a very high price for our permanent freedom. Say amen. That's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Now, let me keep reading to you today. And I want to share with you from February 2nd in my book called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, volume number one. This is a daily devotional. If you don't have a devotional, this would be a great devotional for you to use. The subtitle says 360 Greek word studies for every day of the year to sharpen your understanding of God's word. You just read a little bit every day, but it's so powerful. And by the end of the year, you have really gone somewhere scripturally and really grown. But I want you to listen to what I have written on February 2nd, which is called The Highest Price ever paid to set a slave free, the highest price. In New Testament times, slaves could be very costly. When a slave purchaser came to the slave market to look for a new slave, he would meander through the aisles of the marketplace, his eyes roaming here and there and all over the place for slaves on sale as he searched for the one that he wanted. After pinpointing the slave, who seemed to fit his needs, the purchaser was then allowed to inspect the slave's condition. The purpose of this inspection was similar to that of a test drive when a person's checking out a car before he purchases it. Just as every buyer wants to be sure he's getting a good product, every slave buyer wanted to check out the merchandise before he put the money on the table. The inspection usually included physically beating the slave to see how well he responded to abuse so the purchaser would know how much wear and tear the slave could take on the job. The buyer was also allowed to pull open the slave's mouth and look at his teeth to see if they were rotten or in good shape as he tried to establish the slave's physical health before making an office offer to purchase him. If the buyer decided to proceed with the purchase after the inspection was complete, it was then time for the next stage of the process, that moment when the slave was put on the auction block, when the auctioneer knew that a buyer really had his eye on a specific slave, he could take that as a signal to push the price for that slave as high as possible. And if the buyer continued to show interest in the same slave, that would let the auctioneer know he could demand a completely unreasonable price and probably he would get it. Wow. All of these images are contained in the word redemption. But at times, a caring and compassionate individual would come to the slave market for the sole purpose. Are you listening to this? For the sole purpose of purchasing slaves out of slavery to liberate and set them free forever to never be sold or to be put on the auction block ever again. This was permanent freedom. In this case, the payment offered was viewed as a ransom paid to obtain freedom for slaves. Well, if you understand all of this, here's what it means. Number one, Jesus came into the world, which was Satan's slave market, because he was looking for you and he was looking for me. Jesus was looking for us. Number two, Jesus knew he wanted us and wouldn't be satisfied until the purchase was complete. Number three, Jesus wanted us so much that he was willing to pay any price demanded to purchase us from the slave market. And number four, Jesus paid the price with his blood, the highest price 
ever paid for a slave and purchased us for himself and gave us a liberating freedom that can only be known because of his work in our lives. And this tells us that our freedom from Satan's ownership was extremely expensive. The price Jesus paid for us was the highest price ever paid for a slave. What was the ransom Jesus paid to procure our freedom? His own blood. It was the shedding of Jesus' own blood that guaranteed our deliverance and lasting freedom from demonic powers that previously held us captive. Jesus gave himself as the ransom to set you and me free from sin. Someone, someone had to enter Satan's slave market and Jesus chose to be the one. Someone had to offer a price and Jesus offered to pay the price for your freedom and mine with his own blood. Someone had to finalize the deal so Jesus willingly paid the price with his own life on the cross. That is amazing that Jesus did that for you and for me. He was the slave purchaser. And when Jesus came into the world 2,000 years ago, he came to inspect the slavery of the human race. And he didn't just leave us in our mess, but he came into the market to buy us. That's the word agarazza, which we saw yesterday. And not just to buy us, but to set us free permanently, to buy us out of slavery forever. You see, many people bought a slave, which they used for a while, and then they put them back on the trading block, the auction block, to sell them again. Not with Jesus. When he bought us, he bought us and delivered us from that mess forever. He set us free permanently, and that is what the word ex agorizo means. Listen to this again. It is a compound of the word ek, which means out. The word agarazzo, which means to purchase in the marketplace. It denoted the purchase of a slave out of the slave market to transfer ownership from a seller to a buyer. It means to redeem someone, to redeem something. When compounded, it forms the word ex agarazzo, which pictures one who's come to purchase a slave out of the slave market to remove them from that mess forever, never to be returned there ever Again, that is just amazing. My friend, you were expensive. I was very expensive. We were Satan's slaves. You have to understand it. In fact, when you really study what the Apostle Paul continues to write in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, my friends, we were sold under sin. We were energized by the devil himself. He controlled our mind. He controlled our emotions. He slapped us around, knocked us around, perpetually traded us from one form of slavery into another form of slavery. He abused us, scarred our self-images, marred our emotions. He did everything he could to take us down and destroy us. One reason being because we're made in the image of God and he despises the image of God. Sold into slavery, sold under sin. The Bible tells us we were the servants of sin, swallowed up in the will of sin. Sin was our master. We were the slave of Satan, that diabolical spirit that wanted to take us down, destroy us, and then send us to hell. But Jesus said, nope, I'm going to do something about this. And when Jesus came into the world 2,000 years ago, he came as a slave purchaser. He meandered through society. He meandered through humanity. He looked at us in our condition and he said, I want all of them. What price do I have to pay to secure their freedom? And the Bible tells us he paid with his own blood. He paid with his own blood. That is why we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, you were bought with a price. My friends, you were purchased. You were purchased with a price. That word price in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 describes something extremely expensive. It was the highest price ever paid for a slave. That's the price that was paid for you. It was the blood of Jesus. That was the price. And that is why 1 Corinthians 6, verse 20 goes on to say, Therefore glorify God in your body 
and your spirit, which are God's. Now you're his. You're his. You're the child of God. You're the servant of God. You've been translated out of the dominion of darkness. Darkness is not your place of dwelling any longer. You were delivered from that mess and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son, a place that is dominated by the goodness of God, the light of God, the glory of God and darkness and the effects of darkness are not to be a part of your life any longer, which is why you are to have healing in your body. That belongs in the kingdom of God's dear son. It's why you're to be blessed in your finances. Prosperity belongs to the kingdom of God's dear son. You're to have peace in your mind and peace in your soul because peace is a part of the kingdom of God's dear son. And you were translated out of darkness. Darkness is where sickness was. That's where strife was. That's where torment was. You were delivered from that. In fact, in Colossians 1.13, the word delivered the Greek word ruamai snatched out of it by the merciful act of God and translated into an entirely brand new place into the kingdom of God's dear son where you are supposed to experience all the wonderful, glorious benefits of your redemption. If you're redeemed, you're free. You're not supposed to be sick again. You're not to ever be cursed again. You're not to be tormented ever again. That is not God's will for your life. God's will for you is that you experience freedom from all of that. All of that is what you had in Satan's slave market. But my friends, Jesus himself snatched you out of it by paying the price with his own blood on the cross. And he puts you in a brand new kingdom filled with the goodness of God and the blessings of your redemption, all of that belongs to you. But hey, yesterday we saw the word agarazzo, which means to purchase. That's one word for redemption. Today we saw the word ex agarizo, translated redeem or to purchase, to purchase out of slavery, never to be put on the trading block ever again. You're never to be auctioned ever again. Jesus bought you. He set you free from that mess. That's what this word ex agarazzo means. But hey, there's two more words translated redemption in the New Testament. And tomorrow we're going to see the next one, the word lutru. And on Friday, we're going to look at the word apo lutrosus. You're going to want to shout when you hear what these words mean. That hey, remember, Psalm 107 verse 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so. Say, I'm the redeemed of the Lord. Jesus delivered me and permanently set me free never to be a slave ever again. He's redeemed you from the hand of the enemy. That is what redemption is all about. I'll be back in just a moment, and I want to pray for you. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But do you really know what it means to be redeemed? In the in-depth five-part series, Resting in Our Redemption, Rick Renner unlocks the historical meanings behind the word redemption as it is used in the New Testament. You'll learn that your redemption is powerful, so powerful that you'll realize you really need to know what it means to be redeemed. In this series, Rick Renner will meticulously teach you why battles may still rage in your life even if you're redeemed, how Jesus took you out of Satan's slave market, how Jesus permanently purchased you out of spiritual slavery, what price Jesus paid to liberate you, how God has restored you by the blood of Jesus Christ. You'll be so thankful you took time to digest this powerful series, available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $10. In addition, we're also offering you the 500-page book, Dress to Kill. In this book, Rick answers questions about the often misunderstood subject of spiritual warfare. This comprehensive study on spiritual warfare teaches you how to put on the full armor of God and the importance each piece of armor plays in defeating the enemy. This beautifully bound book can be yours for just $22. Don't miss this special offer, this series Resting in Our Redemption and the book Dressed to Kill. Call the number on your screen now or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now.
My name is Joel Renner, and right behind me, we're about to have a special service for homeless people, the homeless people of our wonderful city. But before we begin, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever spent the cold nights walking the city streets of your town or in a shelter? I hope you never have, but many, many homeless people do every single evening, and that's not the way people are supposed to live. You know, many homeless people are good people, people who have kids, people who have a home, people who have an education had good paying jobs, but somewhere along the way in life, they lost their way, and most of these homeless people spend most of their nights in the cold, on city streets, or in shelters, and that is not the way anyone should spend their nights. I am very proud to say that our Moscow Goodness Church invites these homeless people to a special service where they feel welcome and they can hear about Christ. You know, homeless people also need to hear about Jesus, just like you and I heard about Jesus. It is so very important that they know that our church is open to them. Also, in addition to having special people in our church, we go to them on the streets and shelters where we have a hot meal and tea made for them and where they can also get fresh clothes. And we pray for them and let them know that this care is coming from our church. They need to know that a church is a place where they can receive Jesus and help. If you're one of our partners, I wanna say thank you so very much for supporting our work financially. Together, we're reaching so many people for Christ. If you're not one of our partners, I want to invite you to become one. Jesus is coming back soon, and we need to tell as many people as possible about Christ before He returns. That is so very important. Please call us or go online to Work, and please become one of our financial partners right now. I want to thank you for letting me be with you today. We have two more words to cover this week that also are translated redemption in the New Testament. Don't miss the next two programs. But I would advise you to get the whole series because it's so jam-packed with revelation about your redemption. And the series is called Resting in Our Redemption. My friends, Jesus set you free and His blood was the price He paid to procure your freedom. And you need to know everything that's in your redemption. And this series comes with a wonderful study guide. We're also offering you right now my book called Dress to Kill. And in this book, there's a whole chapter called Resting in Our Redemption, where I go through all these Greek words about the word redemption and what all these words mean for you and for me. You need to get it down inside you because Jesus paid the highest price to set you free. You need to know what it means and you need to walk in it. Amen. And I want to remind you that when you become a partner with our ministry, immediately we will send you a package of books as our way of saying welcome to our partner family. A partner is someone who regularly gives financially to our ministry to help us take this teaching to other people all over the world. And without ever leaving your space or even getting out of your chair, you can go online or give us a call, become a partner and change somebody else's life. It's so easy to change another life. Just go online or give us a call. When you become a partner, you really will reach into someone else's world to bring a difference to them. But Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for the blood that you shed for me and for my friend the highest price ever paid to set somebody free, and you did it for us. And Lord, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow, but please remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If that teaching helped you, would you please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.